to Shop Talk, episode 16 with Jim and Ken. I'm Jim. And I'm Ken. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about single and multiple channel radios and those configurations and how that can work. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Ken, and you can start our little discussion here. Yeah, thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. Uh, this episode is going to be a little bit more about terminology because different vendors may use different terms for different things. And I want to sort of demystify some of that terminology for you. And then we'll talk a little bit more about some of the application of that. So let's start here. If we have a, a radio that just has a single transceiver, meaning it has one transmitter, one receiver in it, typically that's going to be a single channel radio, we'll call it that, and usually a single polarization radio because it only carries one channel, it can only be on one pole. In the WTM series radios, we call that a WTM 4100. As a, the one in that model number is kind of indicative of a one channel radio. That radio would transmit out on either a vertical pole or horizontal. We typically call that just a one plus O or single channel implementation. And whether it's vertical or horizontal, it's the same radio. It just has to do with um, some mechanical implementation of the antenna as to how it's mounted to do that. Very simple. Now when we get into dual channel systems, things get a little bit more complicated. In most cases, or in many cases, when you're running a dual channel radio, your frequency coordinator is going to assign you something that's called an XPIC channel, XPIC standing for cross-pole interference cancellation. It's kind of a weird term. It has more to do with what the radio is doing than really the channel assignment. But it, what it means is a dual-pole channel tuned to the same center frequency. So if you see, uh, we did a previous episode that showed you a nomenclature of a frequency with an S after it, meaning dual pole, but it only had one number. It means that both the vertical and the horizontal are tuned to the same center frequency, and that is by definition XPIC. Well, we sell a radio called the WTM 4200 that has basically built-in XPIC functionality. It'll allow you to do that. Uh, no extra license keys needed necessary for XPIC functionality. That radio, basically, you just click an XPIC button on the GUI, and you, tune, you choose the center frequency, and it puts out on that channel. Now, there's a next thing. And that has to do with what if you had dual pole channels, but they were not on the same center frequency. So they're separated from one another. Um, the WTM4200 can do that as well. They don't have to be XPIC. You just don't select the XPIC button. You choose two separate frequencies, one for vertical, one for horizontal, and the radio will do that as well. So we would usually call that a dual pole two channel system. That could be either XPIC or not XPIC. Now, there's one more thing. This is going to be a lot of information. I'll show you a little graphic after this. It'll help you. You might end up getting assigned two channels on the same pole, meaning the frequency coordinator couldn't find a cross-pole channel, which is usually going to give you better performance, by the way. A cross-pole channel in even XPIC is going to be a better performance than two channels on the same pole. But if they had to, they'd say, well, we can give you two channels, but they're both vertically polarized. We can do that as well. We have a 4200 radio that we call our coupler model, and that radio puts two channels on one single pole interface, and it can do that. And those channels can be adjacent to one another. They can be non-adjacent to one another, so tuned apart if they had to be. So there's really not a lot of uh, limitations with respect to the hardware. We don't really care whether if it's a dual pole radio, we don't care if they're tuned to the same frequency or different frequencies. If it's a single pole radio, we don't care if they're tuned to adjacent frequencies or non-adjacent frequencies. But getting that right and making sure it's a single pole radio or a dual pole radio and the interfaces are correct for your antenna, that's super critical. And really my whole point of this was to try to demystify these terminologies of XPIC and what do we mean when we say single channel and dual channel and what do we mean when we say even I, I didn't mention it yet but uh, four plus O for example what does that mean well typically it just means a four channel system so let me just do this real quick and show you a graphic this is depicting the idea of a cross pole channel we have F1 F2 here one's on one polarization one's on the other this is basically saying one is vertical and one of them is horizontal and they can either be on the same frequency, and if you look at this definition down here, we call it CCDP, co-channel dual polarity. Co-channel meaning tuned to the same center frequency, but dual polarized. And you'll see down here, it uses the word, it's going to use XPIC technology to accomplish that. But you can also tune to non-co-channel arrangements. 
but still dual pole so that other frequency could tune to a different frequency than F1. It can be adjacent channel or anywhere outside of that range. As long as the radio can tune to it, it can be anywhere it wants to be. And as a graphic example of what I talked about, single pole multi-channel, um, we call this adjacent channel copolar would be the idea of two channels on the same pole but adjacent to one another. And again, they don't have to be adjacent. That second channel could move over. There could be space in between them. And as long as that tuning range is available for the radio, you can operate that way as well. So that's hopefully kind of gives a, a more graphical understanding of what we mean when we're doing a two-channel system, either co-polarized or cross-polarized. And so to get you started with that, I briefly mentioned uh, four channel. The only, only thing there is basically you're dealing with two radios, maybe two dual core radios. And typically you'll have two channels horizontal, two channels vertical. Typically those channels will be X-PIC, if you're keeping up with me here. Um, uh, but they don't have to be X-PIC. Again, as long as all four of those channels can be tuned within those ra radios, those radios can support those four channels together. So there's a lot of, uh, of different architectures that can be supported here. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim. Yeah. So thanks, Ken. Uh, good explanation. There's a lot of uh, details that's uh, sometimes hard to sort out. We're certainly going to help you with that. Uh, what I did want to show and mention, so when you're going to do a 4 plus 0 with two radios on each end of the link, so basically each radio carries two channels, and you're going to combine that on a single antenna, and you're going to do the X pick where you're running um, same channel, both vertical and horizontal. Uh, what I wanted to show you here, you've got things on the radio. So on the backs of the radio, there are these interconnect ports here. And what you're going to have to do is get some what we call X-PIC cables. And those cables interconnect the baseband frequencies of the radio so it can do that interference cancellation. That's what X-PIC stands for. Now, in addition to physically hooking up your cables, there's an in and an out label. You want to make sure the in goes to the out on its partner radio. There's some settings now within the radio. You go under the radio configuration section, there's a new tab that's labeled partner radio. You're gonna to need to set up a VLAN between those two radios locally and put a Cat5 jumper cable between the ethernet ports. Uh, and that allows that XPIC to synchronize and talk to its partner radio. So in addition to that, you're gonna to need to get some license keys. When you're doing external XPIC, all the terminals have to have the external XPIC license. If it's just a single terminal uh, and you're gonna do vertical and horizontal, that comes for free built into the base license. So a uh, number of additional steps when you want to do like a 4 plus 0 with external XPIC. So you need cables, you need to get some licenses, and you need to do some additional configuration. Uh, but once it's all said and done, it works great. I just did one last week, as a matter of fact, set it up in the field for a customer. So uh, it works well, but just some additional steps. If you're actually in that position where you're trying to install that, get a hold of any of us. We'll certainly help you out and make sure you're successful at getting it up and going. Yeah, likewise, just for the, um, the initial bill of materials, making sure you have the right license keys and the right cabling to do that. And what you described, Jim, as the 4 plus 0 with two terminals, sometimes can be applied to a 2 plus 0 arrangement. If somebody has two 4100 radios, for example, maybe they started off on a single channel and wanted to grow to a dual channel. They didn't plan that growth ahead of time. They had a single channel radio on one pole. They want to add another radio. They could add that radio and have those radios communicate. And they could, again, if they're not expect, they don't need those expect cables. They don't need those expect licenses. But if they are expect, you do need those expect cables right. and you do need those expect licenses. So the same thing could apply to a two terminal situation, whether those terminals are single channel or dual channel. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, sounds good. Uh, that's a wrap on this version of Shop Talk. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. -bye.